Hi and welcome to animating a keyboard using MIDI. What we've got so far is this is the scene I've set up and the initial scene I've posed the model here and I've put some lighting across the keyboard so we can see it and what I've done in the first couple of three frames I've just simply put our hands in the positions ready to play the keyboard. So the first few frames we set up here are just to get that in position. Now what I'd like to do is show you how to get the information into the keyboard. So I'll delete this for now this so you can see it from scratch. So what we're going to do first of all, this is the MIDI load file and I'm going to run the script. Using the ignore controllers and quantize, I'm going to load the text file. With, so this is the MIDI file that's been converted into a text file, but it's also gone through the MIDI helper to correct any issues that were in there. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is load up the MIDI text file, and I'd like to show you what that is so you can see it. Okay, so all looking good. Okay, so that's finished, so we're going to close that down. Uh, don't forget using KeyMate just to give that a little click and back again so you can see the MIDI data. So in here you can see all the MIDI information that's now been put down onto the timeline. So over here you can see there's different channels that I've recorded from uh, for the various bits from the sample, Magic Samplitude system. So I've exported the MIDI file but these are now the separate channels. Okay, um, so we've got it down here as well if we want to reference it as well. So what we're going to do next is we're going to start to input the data into here. Now, a couple of things worthy of note is I've parented in the Genesis figure, I've parented the keyboard and the legs of the keyboard there all in one bit so I can just move it around the scene. But a little warning about parenting it can change the status of any one of these time periods you've got here and it defaults it back to a linear or TSB one of those two so if you've made a lot of constant changes all the way through if you parent it at this moment in time it defaults it all out so you can lose a lot of our work you've put in there it's actually quite nice to have constant and the change in linear and stuff because you can do some nifty tricks with it but at the moment if you parent an object, um, even parenting the uh, drumsticks to the hand, if you've previously done any work, then that will all change back to linear or TCB, whatever that does. So just be warned about that. Hopefully, um, Daz might be able to save us a lot of work in the future and leave that when we've changed it to constant and keep it as it was. Um, it's just something I found from when I was doing the work before. I've, I've asked uh, Daz to have a look at that for us. Okay, so what we've got so, so far, then I've got my lights set up in here. And in the first bit of the um, bit from the start line to there, I've got the hands positioned ready there. Now what I'd like to show you in this particular keyboard, um, so you're aware of what type of keyboard you need. This Wurzel one was made by Casual. Um, and what he's done, he's made this into an 88 keyboard for us, which is rather nice. Each one of these keys is separate. If you look along here, you can see they're all separate objects. Now, a lot of keyboards that you buy or look out there, they're not there. There's just one. It looks like a keyboard, but in fact, it's all one piece. Now, that's no good to you if you want to do animation. So you need to get a keyboard that is, is available with all these separate bits. That means you can take any object like that one and you can move it backwards and forwards so I can tilt it and make it look like the key's going down, which is what we're going to do. Now some keyboards need, um, they, they actually pivot from here and some pivot, like a piano, will pivot in here so they react slightly differently. But for now we've got each one of those objects in there. Now you can start to see that if we want to get every note to come down on every one of these keyboard keys it's going to be a lot of work so I'm going to show you how you can do that um, a lot easier 
and you just need a notepad to help it out. Now notice as well in the actual uh, keyboard itself we've got the notes are all here so note 87 is that top note there and if I go down to the bottom one well you can see as I go through there where these notes actually are okay so in this case the notes go down to note 0 now there are different naming conventions for different keyboards so pianos I've had another one that I purchased a little while back and it's called something else it could be called key 83 so because these noting uh, all these conventions are different you need to create a config specifically for that instrument if they were all the same it'd be brilliant you could use the same config for all of them but at the moment we can't okay so let's start punching some stuff in here uh, so just to, to briefly recap you need one that's got all these separate animation bits in here um, so that's that's there that you can get so be careful when you go around looking for a keyboard or buying one yourself um, buying the model you know because they are all different okay so let's carry on then so I'm gonna first of all click on the words or to pick up the whole shooting match here we're gonna run the script okay now in this particular case I've loaded it in so I've used the load text I used ignore controllers and quantize loaded the MIDI file in now we're going over to this bit here now what I want to show you here is that these are the different channels and I've put the left hand on channel 2 the right hand on channel 1 equally well you could have played it and done it all on channel 1 drums and things are always slightly different so in this case we're doing we're going to use channel 1 and channel 2 and what I'm going to do is select them. I've selected that particular one there so that, that would do the whole shooting match if I did that so let's be uh, quite specific let's get this one up here this one right on the end there okay so let's go into that one so that's the actual key we're playing with as you can see it's there and obviously if I clicked on that one it would change okay so now I've done that running this and the reason I want to show you this is because this is how you get the first key in there it's already chose the key that we want because it's note 87 I'm going to use channel 1 in this particular instance I'm going to use X rotate I'm going to use a value of 7 and I'm going to add that in okay so I'm not going to punch that down into the timeline instead I'm going to save that file so we're going to come down here I'll call one test okay so what I've done I've used that particular one and I've saved it so now let's do that again but now we're going to go to load and we use load and now we can pull that back if we so wish test what I wanted to show you though is we're going to open that one up in there you can see all these parameters now we've only done one note okay it was note 87 the X rotate and everything else is there and the other important thing is the values are set between 0 and 127 the 127 we can physically move the position of the octave if you like so if we take off 12 off of that and keep coming down we can start to move where the keyboard starts to play so that bit there is where we can move the octave if you like or the notes move it by one if you wanted to and the channel one is the channel one because that's what I've asked for now what I want to show you is if you now copy this and then paste it in here and make that 86 and that 126 and you carry on all the way through you will create a profile for that keyboard the important thing here is this is the note 87 if that was a different keyboard that could be something else so that's why you probably need a different config for every keyboard the first time I did it I did it all manually and trust me it took ages using this method you can get all of those notes quickly in there so let me just show you what else I've done up here this is 
the config that I've created, which is going to pop itself into there. It takes a couple of seconds to go in there. Okay, so that was channel one, loaded from there. I'm going to apply that in there. Then I go back to load file, and this time I'm going to use channel two, which is my left hand. Channel two's come in, I apply those assignments, and before we disappear, I'm going to show you what's in here. So we're going to open that one up. Now notice I started this at 108. So my 87 is no longer 127, I've moved it down an octave. You could go to you know, 96 and then to the other one. So I'm physically changing where these notes are going to play on the keyboard and I've moved it down by an octave. The values are all the same as I've got in here. Now a neat little trick here is if we actually click on that one and do find and replace, okay? And you do find, which is that one, so we can put in there channel one, okay? And it finds it for us, so that's nice and easy. So you can see what I'm about to do. If you go replace, you can take that one and you can change it to channel two. Now you can go through that whole file and you can change the channel from channel one to channel two. So A, we've created a config for that particular keyboard over the whole range of notes, but we've also got the ability to change it. So you can now save, you can take the channel one, save that off as a file, call it something obvious for yourself, and then change it all to channel two, and then save it again as channel two, channel three, channel four, channel five, and so on. Okay, so that's how I've got the different configs for the different channels for that specific instrument. And don't forget the naming convention is very important. If that's different, then that config will not work on that other instrument. Okay, so let's have a quick look. Um, in here, we'll have a quick look at this bit here. Um, so we're going up on here. You can see in the Genesis Fimo, it looks like it's in there okay. This is the config for the keyboard. So now, when we run this through here, you can start to see the notes are playing, okay? And that's how you get the MIDI information that's already been converted and checked by MIDI Helper uh, to the new position in there, okay? All right, and at the moment, we can go through that now and we can start to think about animating the hands. And we'll have a look at that later on in the next video. But for now, that's how you get the config into a specific instrument. Um, it looks a bit complicated, but once you've done it, very easy just to pop it in and change whatever you want. So your next MIDI file, you've already got the config for it. So thank you very much for listening, and I'll catch you later. Bye-bye now.